Hello there and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you exactly how I created these absolutely adorable space buns and this rather jazzy makeup look. So I hope you enjoy, this is going to be perfect for Valentine's, for any day of the year, for any time you want to feel a little bit more glam and you want to try something different with your hair. And yes, I'm so excited to show you all. I'm so pleased with how it turned out. And I am no makeup or hair pro, but thanks to GHD, I can show you guys exactly how to recreate this look. And I'll take you through the step by steps of my makeup as well. I hope you have a fabulous Valentine's Day. I hope you have a fabulous day every day. If you are going out on Valentine's Day, go you, if you're going to be sat at home like I am, eating food, not feeling sorry for yourself because we don't need no dates, nah nah nah, we are free independent young women, word, let's get on with this video. So let's start with my hair, now GHD have actually challenged me to recreate one of their hairstyles in the Inspiration Hub. This is a feature on their website where you can literally follow a step-by-step -step guide on how to create incredible hairdos. So we all know Misha is not a hair pro and she does need a step-by-step -step guide. So we're going to do space buns today and we know everyone loves space buns. Maybe it's not your typical Valentine's Day hair look but we are extra, we're a bit different and yes. So they kindly actually gifted, gifted, gifted me the Platinum Styler gift set which is the Nocturne collection. And in here, this is actually so cute. Oh, dropping things. But we've not only got the pouch of goodies with the Nocturne styler, but also, how cute is this? Because it's a gift set, it comes with two little nail varnishes from OPI, and one of them is in shade Happy Anniversary, and it's quite sparkly. Oh, that's quite in keeping with the theme of today's video. And then the other one is this dark purple, and it's in shade Black Cherry Chutney. So this would be so cute, either for a Valentine's gift, for a gift for yourself, for a gift for any time of year. Again, a gift for yourself. And then, in here, we can see the colour scheme running through with the bag and with the nail polishes. So, any guesses as to what colour and pattern the styler is. And here we have the GHD Platinum Nocturne Styler. So, we've got this nice little cap so you can't go breaking it slash breaking yourself. Obviously we're just going to plug in this and as we can see we are going to use this to help create our space buns. So, I should probably plug this in but can we see what I meant about the running colour scheme? It's a really cute like purple look. So I'm going to plug this bad boy in. We're going to get on with these space buns. Because everyone does actually always ask me about how I do my space buns. And I'm not the best at it. But now that I can follow the hub and I can follow the step by step, then you know I'm just going to be a pro. And these are going to be the best space buns that I've ever done. On the website, you can genuinely look for any hairstyle and hair inspiration. There's even hair trends. I know you can click under like long styles, short styles, as in like if you have short hair or long hair, braids, etc. And there's even videos, not only step by steps. So, I mean, we can all be hair pros thanks to GHD. Oh, also, it comes in this really cute protective little pouch. How adorable is this? Again, so you don't go melting anything or burning yourself. Let's plug this bad boy in and get it heated up. Misha, you forgot the cap bit. No. Bingo. So we're just gonna press the on button. I love how much GHD it makes that noise. It makes you think of like a fairy tale, you know, when she like magically transforms. It's like, da 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 da. Maybe I'll turn it off and turn it on again just so you guys can hear it. Are you ready? Get your ears ready. What do I do? Oh, does it only do it once? Maybe I'll try it again later. Okay, is it on? It's on. We're heating up. We're gonna leave that to heat up. Now you may be thinking, why do we need to use the GHD Nocturne Styler with the space buns? Well, we are gonna create some little bangs going on around the front. So first of all, I'm gonna actually section off 
the fringe part just so we curl these bits later I think it just makes what is quite like a scary hairstyle of the space ones where your hair is all the way back scraped off your face makes it a little bit more wearable. Now as you can see, Misha's bangs are completely unequal, but that doesn't matter. According to the Inspiration Hub, we are gonna split our hair into two ponytails. So, I've got my parting sorted. Now we are gonna just split my hair into two ponytails. This is where we notice how much thinner one side of Misha's hair is. Now, to get these ponies, we obviously want our space buns on the top of our head. So I'm just gonna comb up and smooth out my hair. Grab a hairband and we're gonna secure it on the head where we want our space bun to sit. And I think that looks about right. Whenever I do my space buns, I always feel a bit like Britney Spears at the pony stage. Um, is it Britney Spears or is it Spice Girl? I think it's Britney Spears in like one of her music videos where she's dressed as like a schoolgirl and she's like, oops, I did it again. That's what I feel like whenever I do this. Same on this side, up into a ponytail. I do think space buns are a very good go-to hairstyle. For A, when your hair isn't necessarily freshly washed. B, when you want it off your face. Because you know, if you are going on a date this Valentine's Day, you don't necessarily want to be sat there playing with your hair. You know those people that literally sit there like playing with your hair? If you're one of those people, go for an updo because then you can't be the person that plays with your hair. Can we tell I've got my concentration face on? Sorry about any faces made in this video. I'm a rather expressionate person. So, I think my Kylie or Britney, whichever superstar, ponies are pretty much in place. I'm now going to move on to these front pieces using the GHD Nocturne Styler. So I'm also going to grab some heat defense spray. So here we have the GHD Heat Protect Spray and I mean this is such an important part of curling or styling your hair with heat because we don't want to sizzle it, we don't want to kill it. So I'm just going to spray a little bit. Oh that smells insane. Mmm. What does it smell like? Oh, you can also use this on towel dried hair before blow drying. I've never thought to do that before. Anyway, let's grab our heated up styler and now we are quite literally just going to grab this piece of hair as though you were straightening it but we want to curl these pieces. So you're going to grab this piece of hair and you're just going to twist. It's that easy and simple. Can we see how beautifully that's actually curled the hair? I am so bad at curling my hair with hair straighteners, but genuinely, I've just done it. I've done it! You, Thank you, GHD! And we're gonna repeat on this side. So we're just twisting up and curling. Oh, see, I didn't do that piece perfectly, but that's fine. I can just comb out the piece, grab the styler, twisty, twisty. Oh my gosh, this is so easy. Bing! There is our two curled pieces. Now I will calm them down a little bit in a second, but we're gonna move on to the buns. Oh, let's now turn off my curler. Let's not forget to switch it off at the plug. Now, let's move on to the buns. Make sure our ponies are secure. Now, the next step, according to the Inspiration Hub, is to back comb each ponytail. Now, I've never thought to do this, but I definitely think that will help create our space buns. So I'm just gonna grab a little brush and back comb the pony. This will just give the buns a lot more volume to work with, because I feel like space buns can't be perfect little smooth buns. We need them to be a little bit more edgy. So, next, we are gonna twist the hair loosely to create a circular, shape. Now, we don't have to do this precisely, honestly, just kind of twisty twisty. Then we're going to grab some bobby pins and just secure it in place. Can we see how unprecise I am when I'm doing this? There is one bun complete and now we need to match the other one, but they are sisters, not twins, so it doesn't matter if they don't completely match.
and my space buns are complete. Now obviously I've gone for quite meaty space buns but you can make them as small or as big as you like depending on your hair length. So I think these are so adorable, I feel like Mickey Mouse right now. Thank you so much to GHG for teaming up with me. So first things first, we're going to start off with eyes, hence the extremely zoomed in angle. Apologies. But I'm going to go old school to prime my eyes and use the MAC painterly paint pot like this is so old school i have not heard about this in so long but i thought let's use it now i feel like it's a little bit dried out so i'm gonna spray a little bit of max prep and prime into here into the lid blop in my brush and give it a little swirl just so i'm not putting dry crusty primer i remember i actually used to love this so we'll see Oh, with the prime, with the prep and prime, it's a much softer consistency than I remember, and it's actually doing quite a nice job because I am number one veiny eyelid gal. One eyelid done, on to the next. I pull the most unattractive makeup faces ever and whenever I'm doing my makeup I'm not very good at talking because I'm concentrating. So this is why I haven't really done much makeup content in the past, but it's a new year, I'm trying it out, let me know what you think. So it's actually done a really nice job, I'm highly, highly impressed. Now let's move on to the star of this makeup look, and that is of course the Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette. Now, I actually got this for my sister for Christmas, but I'm stealing it because I wanted to give it a try, and it's rather dirty, so Anya, Learn to take care of your makeup. Not that I can talk, but yeah, looks a bit mucky. White is an interesting colour choice for an eyeshadow palette because yeah, it ends up looking like this. But even even in here, it's a little bit of a mess. Now, at some point, I will do a look on these turquoises. But for this Valentine's look, we are gonna stick with what we know because this is a wearable Valentine's look. I don't want to create makeup looks that no one's ever going to be able to wear. So this is more of like your normal person's go-to makeup look. So we are going to stick around the warm pinky peachy tones, perfect for the season. First up, we are going to set the lid. So I'm going to take... Is there a non-shiny one in here? Let's see, is the first one shiny? A little bit too shiny. Oh, they're all shiny. Hmm. Okay, so there's not really a shade to set your lid with. They're almost a little bit too dark, but I'm going to maybe mix this really light one and then this next long one and hope that it comes out. Oh, okay, yeah, no, those two mixed together makes a nice setting your lid shade. Just to set painterly in place. Now I'm going to go back to this shade, or am I going to... Actually, I might have a little stick in this yellowy crease colour and as it's a crease colour, I'm just going to pop it through the crease. I am a massive warm toned eyeshadow gal, so yes, oh that's a beautiful colour. Now I didn't used to be a fan of Morphe eyeshadows because I just never felt there was that much pigment, but I do notice this Jaclyn Hill palette that there is a lot of pigment and the shades are beautiful so I am I am very impressed thus far now I know it kind of looks like I've stuck loads of yellow on my eyelid but I promise this will look more wearable once all the other layers are in place I am a cereal blender I blend until the cows come home never heard that phrase before then you're probably not from England fabulous or moss or moss Neil I'm debating how dark to go with this look I'm gonna grab this shade that is calling my name and it's quite literally perfectly matching with my blouse and it's beautiful and I'm gonna grab it on my finger so I do think this is sometimes the best way to apply these sort of eyeshadows and then just swipe it onto my lid this is quite a bright pink but I can assure you that I'm gonna create a pinky warm toned look that is very wearable for the normal person that doesn't necessarily like hot pink eyeshadow. This is when it is useful to have little fingers because I've got quite fat bases to my fingers but I go with that. 
Oh, that's useful, Misha. You bring over makeup wipes and then they're all empty. So let's go get another pack. Just because I'm a messy makeup applier, applicator, who knows. Makeup wipe tick. Now let's clean off my finger and I'm going to repeat the exact same on the other eye. But I'm going to use a smaller finger because I learnt my lesson last time. Pigment on this is really beautiful and obviously I haven't used any Fix Plus. If you wanted a more extreme look, I think you could and it would be even more shimmery. Oh look, I'm getting it everywhere. Be sure you're a hot mess but not the hot bit. Now, just to clean up the little bits that my fingers are just too fat to get to, I'm just gonna get a flat shader brush and just make sure I've got things like the inner corner and the outer corner, just because we're putting this all across our lid. You can probably see I'm quite a messy makeup applicator, but you don't need to make it perfect. Like, no one's gonna notice. I have to keep on telling myself that. Mm. What to go with next? I think I'm going to go to the next along shade from the yellow we've already used and pop that through the crease again. I'm really digging that yellowy colour we used earlier though, it's so beautiful. The only thing I do notice is when you start applying other shadows around it, it does kind of brush off the pigment of the shimmer with the Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette but we can just go in with more later. It's looking quite blendable, blended, very nice. Now we're gonna vamp this up a notch. So I'm gonna go in with this bad boy. Now if this shade scares you, then do it anyway. I think they say feel the fear and do it anyway. So we're gonna just pop this more in just the crease, not all blending up. We're gonna keep this in quite a small area and pop it also in the outer corner and just drag it through the crease. Can we see that as I've done that, the shimmer is kind of disappearing entirely? So note to self, if you're doing a shimmer with one of these eyeshadows, do it after you've done all the crease work. That orange is absolutely beautiful. Just to blend it out, I'm gonna go back to the bigger, fluffier brush and just blend it some more. I could probably blend my eyeshadow for like an hour on each eye and I still wouldn't think it's blended enough. Now, we're gonna come down to this sort of like cherry, dark cherry colored color and we're gonna just pop that more in the outer corner just to darken up. Whenever I add a dark color, at first I always think it looks like I've been punched in the eye but then we, we do save the day. Now I'm going to grab an even smaller eyeshadow brush because we're going to go in with a darker colour. Now you can miss out this step if you just want to leave it a little bit more daytime appropriate lateral, lateral? natural and light than you do you. But we are going to vamp it up. Where's the brush I'm looking for? You know you have that like one eyeshadow brush that does exactly what you want it to. And then you just, you just can't find it. Oh, I might have to use that one. Has Anya stolen it or no? I can't think. Where is that damn brush? Okay, the brush has disappeared. I'm just gonna use this one instead. And I'm gonna go to this warm toned brown and I'm only gonna use a little bit because these are very pigmented. It's time to blend. I'm actually gonna grab some of that yellow shade that we used earlier just to make sure everything is beautifully blended and maybe even go back to the red a little bit. Can you see how that makes a difference? I feel like my eyeshadow looks like the Sahara Desert right now though, it's quite funny. Now, I don't think this is mega dark, you could obviously go darker, but I'm gonna stick with that as it is. Now, I said earlier about putting the Fix Plus to make the eyeshadow more foiled, I think we're gonna do it. So I'm just gonna spray some onto the brush. And we're gonna go back into the pinky color we used earlier. And hopefully this will make it really stick into place. These eyeshadows actually really do remind me of the Huda Beauty palette. I create a look kind of similar with it. And I mean, obviously this is like 20 pounds cheaper and you get a lot more eyeshadows. So it's something to consider. Cause when you wet these eyeshadows, the foiled effect is really similar. Can we see the transformation from like foiled to non-foiled? Of course, I'm gonna grab my brush and just ease out the edges. Cause we don't wanna look like we've literally like swiped on some glitter. We want it to look like it's part of the look. Don't we guys? <laughs> mm -mm, you yummy. You yummy. So let's do the same on the other eye. Now I'm not typically someone that's put off by fallout but these eyeshadows don't actually seem to really have much fallout. 
And I always feel like every eyeshadow has loads of fallout, but these actually don't, so that's impressive. I genuinely look like I've based my eyeshadow off of an Egypt Sahara desert, and I am digging it. Question is, are they looking equal? I'm pretty sure they are. Okay, I am digging this look. Ooh, yes! 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 These look absolutely beautiful. Now I am going to use a makeup wipe just to clean up underneath because obviously there has been a bit of fallout. And then we're going to move on to the rest of my face. I am, I am. I think the good thing about having a bigger palette is that you obviously have loads of tones to play with. But also you have lots of colours in a similar colour palette that you can build up. And I think that's why this looks quite effective because it looks at the Sahara Desert because it's got loads of tones and it's got loads of similar shades but like different depths. I'm just throwing around really big words that kind of sound correct but um, forgive me if I'm wrong. You know what I mean. We've used lots of different eyeshadows so it's built up so it looks more flawless. Thank you Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette. I'm done with you until I move on to my lash line later but let's get working on my skin. So face makeup time. We are gonna start with some of my cult favourite by Terry Cellular Rose. Celia? Celia Brightening CC Serum. Don't know where I got the rose bit from. And I'm just gonna pop this on my face. I do even use this when I'm using a foundation because I just love the way it makes my skin look. Just adds like radiance underneath and it's beautiful. Kinda looks like I've got an orange marker and just like drawn on a strip on my head. But once I blend it in, I promise it looks fine. I do normally get quite a bit of it into my eyebrows, which I try to avoid because I don't really want bright orange eyebrows because it wouldn't really match my hair colour. We good. Now, I'm going to take some of this tester of the Huda Beauty Complexion Perfection Pre-Makeup Base. The texture's very nice of this. Oh, there's a crispy bit. Must have dried out. But, yeah, it does feel very nice. It's quite thick for a primer. What is this? Oh, you know when a bit of the cream goes a bit crispy? Just rubbing around on my face then. So although I like it, I am a bit like this is quite thick and it's quite tacky for putting on before. Like, it's a bit sticky. Probably not a bad thing for makeup because obviously you want it to stick. But everything else seems to be sticking as well. It's really nice on my forehead. It's more down on my nose that it's a bit too tacky. Okay, let's move on to a foundation. Now I'm gonna use the MAC foundation. This is the Studio Sculpt SPF 15 foundation. Now I'm not sure what color I'm gonna need, so we're gonna have to play it by ear, but I've got both shades with me. I seem to be using a lot of MAC in this video and I don't really, didn't really mean to. Is that about the right shade? That's NC25 and then this and then this is NC35 I think. Maybe if I mix those two together we'll be good. Just gonna grab a little dibbly brush. Oh okay yeah I think those two shades together so NC20 and NC35 mixed together is my shade right now. This is quite a thick full coverage foundation so I don't wear it that often but it does give a beautiful finish so whenever I do wear it I do always love it. I always love how in makeup we kind of use our hand as like a little palette like a little concoction board where we just sort of mixy mixy. Who knew I was going to end up being a painter? <laughs> Not quite literally of course. Blending it down the neck and the ear slash hairline. My mum always screams at me for getting foundation in my hairline. But I'm like, mum, would you rather I get foundation in my hairline or have like a white patch where you can see my scalp? So, you know. I probably have got a little bit too much of this foundation because as you can see it is very thick. But if I grab my beauty blender, I think this will just help to thin it out a little bit. It used to be my go-to pageant foundation actually before I found out about the Makeup Forever Stick foundation which is now like my go-to. I won't take away from this foundation, it's very nice. I don't really know what finish it is, I can't really remember. Does it say on it? It just says keep out of eyes and stop if irritation occurs. Hopefully we'll be good, touch wood. 
Pitch wood. Actually, that's bamboo, but we'll go with it. Just like I do with my eyeshadow, I blend till the curls come home on my face. And I basically beat up my face. Like, when I do people's makeup, well, as in my family and my friends, because I'm by no means a makeup artist, but they're like, gosh, Misha, you're abusive. Foundation complete. Now, I'm going to do something that I don't do very often, so let's see how this goes. But I've grabbed this NYX... What is this called? Foundation de Baton. I think it's basically just a stick foundation in Espresso MSF14. And we're gonna do a little bit of cream contour, which does scare me a little bit, but we'll be fine. We can do this together, guys. I still wanna learn how to contour my nose, but I just, I'm scared. Should I try a tiny bit? Meh. Meh. It just doesn't seem to ever look very good when I do it, but we're gonna try, guys. I'm just gonna grab the same brush I used earlier and just blendy blendy. Oh, that's kind of just blended away. It's giving me a little bit of colour, but not loads, which probably isn't a bad thing if you're gonna use it as a contour stick because um, you don't wanna end up with brown streaks. So, this might actually be a good product to do nose contour with because it's very light. Like you can't really see much of that. I could even add some more. I think I actually might, because I'm liking the colour. I just want to build it up a little bit. Should I contour my chin as well? I never normally do, but, you know, stepping outside of our com com contour zones? Contour zones and comfort zones. I never know if I can tell a difference when I contour my chin. I think that's why I don't really bother, but we'll just pretend it makes me look like Kim Kardashian. Okay, nose contour wise, I'm gonna grab a smaller brush. I'm actually probably gonna use the brush that I used to apply painterly eyeshadow primer. So I'm just gonna lightly try and blend this out. Maybe I should have done this first. Currently got a line, currently got a line. I'm gonna play some, spray some Fix Plus on my nose just cause this is dried out a little bit. Fix Plus and makeup setting sprays are my answer to everything cause they just kind of, Make it a bit more moist so you can blend a bit better. Does my nose look any skinnier? I'm really into RuPaul's Drag Race recently. Like me and mum have really got into it. And they're always so good at contouring their noses. Can they please come teach me? Yeah, I feel like that's kind of done nothing for my nose, but we'll go with it. Next, I'm going to take a different concealer than I normally use. And this is the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Concealer. Now this is very good. It's very full coverage. Don't know if it's going to be the right shade for me because I'm not really into that stark white concealer at the moment. But we'll put some on and we'll see. This is looking quite stark white. This is all throwback to the days when Misha used to use a genuine white concealer. But maybe when we blend it out, it will look more reasonable. Oh my gosh, this is so white. I'm just not really into massively white concealers because I think the stark difference makes you look more exaggerated, like that you're trying to cover something. Very nice concealer, it's just incredibly stark. It blends beautifully. Actually, maybe that looks okay. I'll go with that. I don't normally actually recently set my concealer, but because this is quite full coverage, I'm going to. And I'm just gonna grab some of the Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder and set this bad boy in place, just to reduce any creasing. Fair, that does look damn flawless. But these videos are going to be where I rediscover products that I didn't even realise I liked so much. Okay, yeah, my concealer looks a bam. That looks insane. So now I'm going to bronze up my skin. Oh, I just caught my skin in that. Bronze up my skin and catch my skin with the hourglass bronzer. I'm going to go for quite a big buffed out brush just because I want to warm up my skin and I'm not massively into harsh cheekbone lines. And I've already contoured a bit, so we only need to bronze. This is where I put bronzer on my forehead and my mum screams at me because she says it looks weird, but I like it. Okay, I'm actually digging that concealer so much. Oh my gosh, it looks insane. I feel like I'm having a good makeup day today, which is so exciting. But now I say that, I'm gonna jinx myself and it's all gonna go wrong from here, but everyone cross their fingers. Blush time. Now, I'm using more MAC for some reason, but I mean, I do like MAC products, I just, I feel like all my MAC products are quite old. Because, I mean, makeup takes ages to get through, so I'm going back to some old favourites. Now, this is the MAC Blusher in Petal Power Mineralize, Min Mineralize? Mineral Mineralize. You know when you say a word and it just sounds funny for some reason? Just have that. And I'm going to pop this on my cheek. 
This is quite a shimmery blush and it kind of matches perfectly with the eyeshadow, which I didn't think about when I chose it, but we'll pretend I did. Obviously I am looking very blushed right now, but it does kind of settle itself down. Next we're going to move on to the Anastasia Glow Kit, and this is in that glow. So it's got sunburst, golden bronze, bubbly and dripping gold. Now I'm going to go for golden bronze, I'm going to grab my fan brush. You can see that I've loved this. I think I switched out, oh wait no, I'm using dripping in gold. Dripping in gold, I've switched out the brown one. Ooh! If you are going on a date this Valentine's Day, just blind them with your highlight. No, I'm a nose highlight gal, I'm all about that nose highlight. I don't like it to go up here, I just like it more on the tip. I'm also a Cupid's bow highlighter, but I'm not a chin highlighter, because um, I think it makes my chin look greasy. I'm getting makeup brush hairs at my nostrils. Now I'm going to grab a smaller brush and I'm also going to highlight my brow bone. Actually, first before I do that, I should fill in my brows. So where's my brow pencil? We're going to take the Mark Perfect Brow Sculpting Pencil in Ash Blonde from Avon, and I absolutely love this product and it takes me five seconds to fill in my eyebrows. And it's so much cheaper than a normal brow pencil. Can we see the brow difference? It's not huge, but it just makes it a lot more smart, a lot more angled, and a lot more defined. It's mostly in the inner corner of it, but you can really tell the difference. Brows complete. Time to set them in place with none other than the NYX Brow Mascara in Brunette. You guys are pretty fed up of hearing about this, but it's life. Now I'm also going to take the Brow Coat Brow Gel and this genuinely glues your eyebrows into place. Now we can go back to the Glow Kit and highlight my brow bone because for me no makeup look would be complete without a brow bone highlight. I know not everyone's into it but you do you. I'm not looking for a half reasonably clean brush to do so. Let's not forget to spray some fix plus on my face and I'm now gonna draw in my moles like I always do with the Maybelline Cahol Brown Eyeliner. Obviously this isn't advertised as a mole filler in her but I don't think there's such a thing. So this works a treat. Now I wouldn't normally powder my face but I think because that foundation is so thick and tacky my chin is being very sticky. So I'm gonna grab my powder which seems to have run away. Oh, it's right here. Shock, it was right in front of me. I'm just going to powder this part of my face. This is the only place I normally powder, just by my lips, because I feel like it makes it look really greasy. Like, my forehead isn't shiny at all. I definitely don't need to powder it. Next things. Next is to obviously match the bottom to the top. So we're going to go back to the Jaclyn Hill eyeshadow palette, and we're going to do our bottom lash line. I think I actually normally would just go for a matte shade across the bottom lash line, but I'm really digging this pink glitter sparkly shade that we use, so I'm actually going to use that as well. Okay, avoid getting pink glitter in your eyeballs because that kind of hurts. This is kind of just where I marry all of the top to the bottom and we make it look like a complete eye. There's the pink shimmer on, now I'm going to move on to the yellow shade and I basically just repeat the whole entire process that I've done on my eye but on the bottom half. Swipey, swipey. That orange really, really pops on the bottom lash line. Just now in the outer corner bit where the two connect. Now it's time to get a little bit cleaner brush and blend all that as per usual. I'm actually gonna spray some Fix Plus on the glittery eyeshadow and use that in the inner third of my eye. I feel like half the Fix Plus you just lose to the environment because obviously when you spray it, it goes everywhere. Oh yeah, that makes all the bit of difference. I'm always scared, like, do I add in an inner corner highlight? Is it gonna make it look tacky? I think I'll stick with what we've got right now because I think we've got enough going on. Now we need to get rid of these foundation lips because this is just not a good look. Oh, but I've nearly forgotten, bottom lash mascara. I do have eyelash extensions from the Beauty Secret Clinic, which I shall link down below. So I only need to put mascara on my bottom lashes, which is very useful because A, you don't use as much mascara, and B, you don't have to stick on fake eyelashes. FYI about my lashes, I get them done about every two weeks, and I pay, I think it's 
35 pounds for infills so i am totally crushing over this look from my adorable little space buns these beautiful curls to frame my face thanks to ghd and i mean this eyeshadow look is just slaying life it's the most fashionable sahara desert i've ever seen i can't decide if my lips are going to dry them out or not so yes, thank you so much to GHD for working with me. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to check the description box because I'm going to link all the items mentioned down below and of course the inspiration hub so you can follow along with their step-by-step -step guides and their how-to videos because trust me they are a lot better than i am but anyway i hope you enjoyed this look i really enjoyed filming it i hope it was helpful i am digging this under eye concealer i'm gonna get using this again and yeah, we use a lot of MAC products, we use a lot of shimmers, we've gone for a matte skin but with a glowy finish and I am in love with it. So thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel, check the description box for everything mentioned and yes, I will see you guys all next time. Let me know how I did for one of my first ever proper makeup tutorials and the first put together hair tutorial. So, bye guys. Mm.